eye-opener. We don't know what we don't know. Our hubris stops us from realizing that we are stumbling around in the dark. In every generation there are those who think we've reached the pinnacle of our understanding. Far too many believe there are no more peaks to summit. This false belief plays out in different ways and in relation to different things. Whether it be technology like going to the moon that blinds us from what lay beyond Earth's satellite or capitalism that keeps the majority of us indebted and therefore enslaved to the wealthy. We lack the mindset necessary for true evolution. If you consider that as recent as the 1970s, people thought no one should watch TV or work or doing anything during an eclipse, you would have to agree that we're not as smart as we think we are. For an even more recent event, consider the fear that the year 2000 spread across the globe. Computers would stop working, and some even feared planes falling from the sky. The Y2K problem has people going out of their minds. As for not knowing what we don't know, this must be a given since so many of us don't know the things we or think we know. Let me explain. A majority of at least a plurality of us live as if we couldn't live without our mobile devices. While some of us might not make it couples weeks without a cell phone because we order all of our meals on Uber Eats or DoorDash, most of us need not be so dependent on this technology. As life-affirming as a cell phone may be to some, one must realize that this tech was not so ubiquitous at the beginning of the 1990s. Yet, here we are thirty-four years later, and our entire existence lives in our pocket. From food to banking to social interactions, people have outsourced their lives to technology. This would be very, very cool if we understood the science behind it all. Currently, there are few amongst us who know how this black box works. Oh, we know what it does, but most have no clue as to how it does it. We don't know how our phones order our food. We just know that our food almost always arrives cold and that the humans who deliver it are allergic to doorbells. We don't, however, know how the program that allows us to order food works. We know what the end result of dating apps is supposed to be, but how it pairs us with our potential soulmate is as mysterious as asking a genie to help us find love. It's like magic, and we have no clue as to what spells make it happen. This is why I say we don't know what we don't know. And, well, this is a problem, it is exacerbated by the fact that most don't even have the curiosity to delve into it even at the most superficial level. Now, on an individual level, this ignorance may not be a problem, but when a nation exhibits such lack of knowledge or lives in virtual darkness, people around the world suffer. Americans took forever to see the harm that Israel is causing to its neighbors for decades because they chose not to look into this issue at all. The U.S. border is being overrun in part because of American intervention in the illegal immigrants' country of origin. Americans are so worried about election interference here at home, but fail to realize how many countries the U.S. has played a part in changing regimes. The evidence is out there, but Americans don't care. At least they didn't care until those people started flooding American cities. Most Americans don't even realize that the U.S. government created Al-Qaeda. Osama bin Laden was praised by the U.S. And guess why? Because he was fighting Russia for us. Sound familiar? Sound like the excuse used to send Ukraine hundreds of billions of dollars. This is yet another thing so many of us don't know that we don't know. Just wait until those who are manipulating us lose control of the technology that so few of us understand. While people like Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell may know politics, there is no way they can comprehend threats like artificial intelligence. I imagine all three of them nodding their heads as AI and its potential impacts are explained in the simplest terms possible.
I imagine that this discussion passes in one ear and out the other just as easily as any they have had in relation to helping out the majority instead of the minority of elites to which the bow. Though this may sound biased, I would like you to consider how well you understand the technology. So many aspects of your life depends. Then consider whether you think any of those septagenons or octogenarians understand that tech as well as you do. It's important because that tech is und will continue to have an impact on your life und your kids' lives. So the question is this, do you trust them to be ahead of the AI that's coming, or would someone like Elon Musk be more suited for such a role? You may argue that they have tech files to watch over the advances made in the field of AI, medicine, food safety, and more. But where are those folks, space rockets, electric vehicles, and more? I don't know of what I don't know, but I do know that neither Pelosi, Schumer, McConnell, nor any of the older people in Washington, D.C. can grasp the benefits nor the threats that are coming out of A. To find out other ways you're being screwed by your current leaders, check out the posts on this blog daily. Learn about the biggest and worst issues that America and its people face today. You can also check in to also learn about those issues that America and its people will face in the near and distant future. If, however, you would like to learn about possible solutions to either mitigate the worst impacts of these issues or solutions to avoid them altogether, keep listening. The problems we face are not as complicated as so many leaders and news reports claim. They are man-made and are only claimed as complicated so those who are responsible can maintain control. For example, there is a persistent argument that moving government is like turning a cruise ship around. It is supposedly a long process that can only be achieved incrementally. While this may be true for laws and policies that benefit the majority of Americans, it does not seem to be so for that smallest of American minorities. When one examines the policies and laws that benefit that minority known as the elite or the rich, the speed at which those laws are passed is exponentially faster. While most of us sit on the deck chairs waiting for the Titanic to avoid the myriad of icebergs of which we seem to continually run afoul, the elite ride comfortably in speedboats. If, according to our constitution, all men are created equal, why do the rich live quite different lives than the rest of us? Where is our speedboat? In 2018, Chris Osman wrote a book highlighting the problems humanity would face if more power, wealth, and control were funneled to a small cohort of individuals, groups, or organizations. In that book, Mr. Osman provided solutions from himself and others to the inevitable problems we would all face. In it, he also provided a means for the public to analyze, compare, and contrast the words and deeds of those we've chosen to follow against our real-world experiences. To this end, Mr. Oshman provides the means for readers to disseminate information as provided by their news sources of choice, their elected officials, and any other authorities they choose to follow. The book, titled Solutions Enough Complaining, Let's Fix America offers a means to hold leaders up to, not just a higher standard than is currently accepted, but one that will improve lives. Don't be an ignoramus. Click the link below and get your copy today.